But there will be no gloom for her that was in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden, and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult, and every garment rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The Lord has sent a word against Jacob, and it will light upon Israel, and all the people will know, Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who say in pride and in arrogance of heart, The bricks have fallen, but we will build with dressed stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will put cedars in their place. So the Lord raises adversaries against them, and stirs up their enemies. The Syrians on the east and the Philistines on the west devour Israel with open mouth. For all this, his anger is not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. The people did not turn to him who struck them, nor seek the Lord of hosts. So the Lord cut off from Israel head and tail, palm branch and reed in one day. The elder and honored man is the head, and the prophet who teaches lies is the tail. For those who lead this people lead them astray, and those who are led by them are swallowed up. Therefore the Lord does not rejoice over their young men, and has no compassion on their fatherless and widows. For every one is godless and an evildoer, and every mouth speaks folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. For wickedness burns like a fire, it consumes briars and thorns. It kindles the thickets of the forest, and they roll upward in a column of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts the land is burned, and the people are like fuel for the fire. No man spares his brother. They snatch on the right, but are still hungry, and they devour on the left, but are not satisfied. Each devours his neighbor's flesh, Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh. And together they are against Judah. For all this his anger is not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. Woe to those who decree iniquitous decrees, and the writers who keep writing oppression, to turn aside the needy from justice, and to rob the poor of my people of their right that widows may be their spoil, and that they may make the fatherless their prey. What will you do on the day of punishment, in the storm which will come from afar? To whom will you flee for help, and where will you leave your wealth? Nothing remains but to crouch among the prisoners, or fall among the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. Ah, Assyria, the rod of my anger, the staff of my fury, against a godless nation I sent him. And against the people of my wrath I command him, to take spoil and seize plunder, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. But he does not so intend, and his mind does not so think. But it is in his mind to destroy, and to cut off nations, not a few. For he says, Are not my commanders all kings? Is not Calno like Carchemish? Is not Hamath like Arpad? Is not Samaria like Damascus? As my hand has reached to the kingdoms of the idols, whose graven images were greater than those of Jerusalem and Samaria, shall I not do to Jerusalem and her idols, as I have done to Samaria and her images? When the Lord has finished all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, he will punish the arrogant boasting of the king of Assyria and his haughty pride. For he says, By the strength of my hand I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I have understanding. I have removed the boundaries of peoples, and have plundered their treasures. Like a bull I have brought down those who sat on thrones. My hand has found like a nest the wealth of the peoples. And as men gather eggs that have been forsaken, so I have gathered all the earth. And there was none that moved a wing, or opened the mouth, or chirped. Shall the axe vaunt itself over him who hews with it, 
or the saw magnify itself against him who wields it, as if a rod should wield him who lifts it, or as if a staff should lift him who is not wood. Therefore the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will send wasting sickness among his stout warriors, and under his glory a burning will be kindled, like the burning of fire. The light of Israel will become a fire, and his holy one a flame, and it will burn and devour his thorns and briars in one day. The glory of his forest and of his fruitful land the Lord will destroy, both soul and body, and it will be as when a sick man wastes away. The remnant of the trees of his forest will be so few that a child can write them down. In that day the remnant of Israel and the survivors of the house of Jacob will no more lean upon him that struck him, but will lean upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. A remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. For though your people Israel be as the sand of the sea, only a remnant of them will return. Destruction is decreed, overflowing with righteousness. For the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will make a full end, as decreed, in the midst of all the earth. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, O my people who dwell in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrians when they strike with the rod and lift up their staff against you as the Egyptians did. For in a very little while my indignation will come to an end, and my anger will be directed to their destruction. And the Lord of hosts will wield against them a scourge, as when he struck Midian at the rock of Oreb, and his rod will be over the sea, and he will lift it as he did in Egypt. And in that day his burden will depart from your shoulder, and his yoke will be destroyed from your neck. He has gone up from Rimon, he has come to Aath, he has passed through Migron. At Michmash, he stores his baggage. They have crossed over the pass. At Geba, they lodge for the night. Ramah trembles. Gibeah of Saul has fled. Cry aloud, O daughter of Galim. Listen, O Laisha. Answer her, O Anathoth. Madamemna is in flight. The inhabitants of Gebim flee for safety. This very day, he will halt at Nob. He will shake his fist at the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. Behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will lop the boughs with terrifying power. The great in height will be hewn down, and the lofty will be brought low. He will cut down the thickets of the forest with an axe, and Lebanon, with its majestic trees, will fall. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with the righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his waist and faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The sucking child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as an ensign to the peoples. Him shall the nation seek, and his dwelling shall be glorious. In that day, the Lord will extend his hand yet a second time to recover the remnant which is left of his people, from Assyria, from Egypt, from Pathros, from Ethiopia, from Elam, from Shinar, from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. He will raise an ensign for the nations, and will assemble the outcasts of Israel, and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. The jealousy of Ephraim shall depart, and those who harass Judah shall be cut off. Ephraim shall not be jealous of Judah, and Judah shall not harass Ephraim. But they shall swoop down upon the shoulder of the Philistines in the west, and together they shall plunder the people of the east. They shall put forth their hand against Edom and Moab, and the Ammonites shall obey them. And the Lord will utterly destroy the tongue of the sea of Egypt, and will wave his hand over the river with his scorching wind, and strike it into seven channels that men may cross Dryshod. 
and there will be a highway from Assyria for the remnant which is left of his people, as there was for Israel when they came up from the land of Egypt. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, and you did comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. In my vain life I have seen everything. There is a righteous man who perishes in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in evil doing. Be not righteous overmuch, and do not make yourself overwise. Why should you destroy yourself? Be not wicked overmuch, neither be a fool. Why should you die before your time? It is good that you should take hold of this, and from that withhold not your hand. For he who fears God shall come forth from them all. Wisdom gives strength to the wise man more than ten rulers that are in a city. Surely there is not a righteous man on earth who does good and never sins. Do not give heed to all the things that men say, lest you hear your servant cursing you. Your heart knows that many times you have yourself cursed others. All this I have tested by wisdom. I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. That which is, is far off and deep, very deep. Who can find it out? I turned my mind to know, and to search out, and to seek wisdom, and the sum of things, and to know the wickedness of folly, and the foolishness, which is madness. And I found more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets, and whose hands are fetters. He who pleases God escapes her, but the sinner is taken by her. Behold, this is what I found, says the preacher, adding one thing to another to find the sum, which my mind has sought repeatedly, but I have not found. One man among a thousand I found, but a woman among all these I have not found. Behold, this alone I found, that God made man upright, but they have sought out many devices. For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a slave to all, that I might win the more. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not myself being under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being without law toward God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I might share in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. Well, I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I pommel my body and subdue it, lest, after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Ecclesiastes poses the problem of life's unfairness in stark terms. There is a righteous man who perishes in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his evil doing. The heart wonders why God, in his justice, would allow such upside-down circumstances to persist. Yet his answer does not come in the form of revised judicial procedures, but in the person of his son. Isaiah eloquently proclaims the coming of the Messiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. The darkness of injustice is wiped away by his arrival. This child will be wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. The Messiah will not be an outsider, but a son of David from the stump of Jesse, David's father. Through him, a remnant will return, the remnant of Jacob, to the mighty God. Jesus, as the fulfillment of these prophecies, ushers in an era of salvation, of light, of return to the Lord. While we might experience unfairness or injustice in our earthly lives, we can rest with confidence in his eternal justice, knowing that one day he will judge the world in righteousness. How can you rest in the justice of God in the midst of life's unfairness?